أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم کتاب I told you that these two surahs go to make a pair, pair of Makki surahs, Al-An'am, Al-A'raf. Now this Al-A'raf is the largest surah, Makki surah in the Quran. It, is, it consists of 206 ayat and 24 sections. Although there is one Makki surah that is Shu'ara, which consists of a greater number of ayat, 227. But the ayat in Surah Shura are very small. So that those 227 ayat go to make only 11 sections. And if you compare the volume of the two, the volume of this Surah Al-Araf is two and a half times more than that of Surah Al-Shura. So this is the biggest and the largest Makki Surahs. Now what is the relationship between these two surahs? You know, pair, if two things are a pair, there must be some similarities. And there must be some difference also. Where those two things come become complementary to each other. So you will find that we have read, you know, the whole of Surah Al-An'am. Mention has only been made in somewhat detail of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Neither of Nuh, nor of Hud, nor of Saleh, nor for that matter of Lut, or Moses, etc., etc. Because, you know, these are the Abba'ur Rusul. Abba'ur Rusul, Naba means a very important news. Amma yatasalun, anin Naba il azim il lazihum fi mukhtarifun. Naba, a very big news. So the big news of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abba'ur Rusul. What are those news? That a prophet, a messenger was sent to such and such nation. They belied him, not believed in him. They were destroyed. This story repeated many a time in the Quran. Nuh, Hud, Saleh, Lut, then Shaib and Moses. Six messengers of Allah are repeatedly quoted and, you know, referred to in the Quran. You will find in Surah Araf, in the chronological order, in the historical sequence, the mention of these six messengers of Allah. As for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, it is never given in the Quran that some such punishment came to the people of Ibrahim. It appears that he is the climax of the prophethood. To, pick, to nations where prophets were living, if the nations didn't believe in the prophet, no punishment came to them. The king at the time of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, he didn't believe in him. And the whole of the Egyptians, they didn't believe in, in, in Jesus, that he is the prophet of Allah. But still, you know, the, 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 the attitude was different. The messenger, whenever he came, he said, Ati'ullah, Urbudullah wa ati'un. You have to do worship to Allah, and you have to obey me. This is the call of all the messengers. But the prophets, they might be living like, you know, Aliyah Allah, but the only difference between a Waliullah and a Nabi is that to the Nabi, Wahi was coming, revelation was coming. To the Aliyah Allah, to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, 
and for that matter other all yeah allah of this muslim ummah wahi didn't come but they were very pious people so much good spread from their personalities in their society so actually prophets are more resembling the all yeah the only difference is that revelations were coming to them but messengers are a different category they represent allah they come and demand bring me obey me you have to obey me ali abdullah wa atiun you have to obey me we have read you know in surah an-nisa obedience to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ma arsalna min rasulin illa li yutaa bi iznillah we have sent no rasul no messenger but that they, they that he should be obeyed wa ma yutri rasul faqad ata allah who so obeys the messenger he actually obeys allah so you know we find in this surah araf the story of six of the messengers of allah to whose nations the severest punishment came azab ul istisal qati adab ul qaum al ladina zalamu when their roots were cut when they were all annihilated except the few who came to believe in the messenger but no such thing appeared in surah al anam hazrat ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam although he was himself muwahhid but you know what happened to his nation even though he was thrown in fire by the nation but only a slight reference at one point but not in that way so actually this is a a a you know a point in which these two surahs come close to each other that this subject is more dealt with in surah al-araf and at-tazkir bi ala illah you know allah's allah's blessings allah's bounties allah's creation all these things are more discussed in surah al-anam we have read and this allah's punishment by sanjeev's coming and if the nations don't accept them then the dire consequences they are more detailed discussed in surah al-araf alif lam mim sa these are the alphabets which are pronounced separately huruf muqattaat separately and nobody knows the exact meanings there are so many conjectures nothing has been you know given to us by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also so we can't say there are certain opinions but you know in this rapid translation there is no time for the discussion of these things kitabun unzila ilayka fala yakun fi sadrika harajun minhu o muhammad this is a book sallallahu alaihi wasallam which has been sent down to you fala yakun fi sadrika harajun minhu there should be no you know grief no narrowing of the chest in you due to this why you shouldn't be very much grievous very much grieved on whether i am doing the right duty or not this was the thought which haunted muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam although he was doing everything that he could do day and night preaching 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 although you know people were telling him to be you have gone crazy majnoon you are a poet or you have been possessed by some evil spirits but he was preaching even then he thought maybe i am not fulfilling my duty why are they not believing maybe i am at fault maybe i have not been able to convey to them the way i should have conveyed fala takun fi sadrika harajun there should be no you know impediment in your hearts the tunzira bi and this book has been only sent to you so that you warn the people with this again bihi unzira kum bihi we find these words in surah al-alam oh hi ilayya had al-quran le unzira kum bihi here le tunzira bihi so that you warn people with this book with these ayat wa zikra lil mu'minin and this is actually a reminding for the people who believe ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum rabbikum follow what has been sent down to you from your lord wala tatabi'u min dunihi awliya don't follow any other protectors or friends leaving him aside qalilan ma tadakkarun but little are you admonished 
little reminding you get. وَكَمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا Now this is the main theme of this surah as I told you. How many towns and townships have been أَهْلَكْنَاهَا whom we destroyed. فَجَاهَا بَيَاسُنَا بَيَاتًا To them came our punishment either at the night or whom قَائِنُون or during the noon when they were making qailula, when they were test, they were resting, because it was the, you know, custom with all the Arab nations of that area. This qailula, is, is, is small sleep, a pause during the noon. Famagana But when our punishment, our azab came to them, the only call and plea that they took was, illa an qalu inna kunna zalimin. They lamented. Verily, we were on the wrong side. Verily, we were the evil doers. فَلَنَسْ أَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْ أَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ This small ayah is very profound regarding the basic philosophy of Qur'an. What is the institution of messengerhood? فَلَنَسْ أَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We will surely, definitely question them also to whom we sent the messengers. وَلَنَسْ أَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ and we shall question the messengers also. I told you, رَبُّ رَبُّنْ وَإِنْتَنَزَّلْ وَالْعَبْدُ عَبْدٌ وَإِنْتَرَقَّهُ Messengers are accountable. And this is very logical. If you send a message to some friends of yours, do this work by tomorrow evening, otherwise I will have to sustain some loss. Please do it before that time. And the work is not done. The loss has come to you. Now you are furious. You go to the friend. I sent you a message. You have to do it. Why didn't you do it? Who is responsible for the loss that I have sustained? And if he says only one sentence, Brother, your message didn't reach me. It was not conveyed to me. Can you say another word to him now? Now your Anger will be directed towards the person to whom he had entrusted the message to convey to him. I will go to him. Look here. What have you done? I entrusted you with a message. You had to convey it to him. You didn't convey. So now you are responsible for the loss that I have sustained. Isn't it logical? The same is the logic of this ayah. Allah sent his message to a messenger. Now it was his duty to convey it. If supposedly he fails to convey, now who is to blame? The people will go scot free. Oh Allah, he didn't, he didn't convey the message to us. They will go scot free. The whole blame will come on whom? The messenger. And if he has conveyed, well, he is relieved of his duty. Now they will be questioned. Alam yatakum rasulun mir rabbikum? Didn't they convey to you our message? Yes. Alu bala wa rabbina. The message came to us. So this is actually, this is called shahada. That is why we read in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayyuhar rasul, balig ma anzila ilayka mir rabbik wa illan tafal fama balakta risalata. Oh, Messenger of Allah, convey everything that has been sent to you from your Lord. And if you fail to do it, then you will not have fulfilled your responsibilities as Messenger of Allah. Ya ayyuhar rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik, wa illam tafhal, fa ma ballakta risalata. And that is why, you know, on the occasion of the last pilgrimage, the Prophet ﷺ took a testimony from the whole of the audience. More than 100,000 people. 120,000. 124,000. After giving the finishing touches to his message in his sermon, the sermon of the last Hajj, then he asked a question from the audience. Allah al Have I conveyed to you the message? And the whole congregation replied in a chorus, one voice, Inna nashadu anna taqad ballagta wa addayta wa nashahta. 
We bear witness to it. We testify. You have done your duty. You have conveyed the message. Then he raised his eyes and with his fingers he pointed towards the sky and then to the audience. Allahumma shad. Allahumma shad thrice. Oh Allah, be a witness to it. They are accepting. They are testifying that I have conveyed the message to them. And then the last, Fal Yubal Shahidul Ghaiba. Now the burden has come from shoulder, my shoulder to yours. Now it's the duty of those who are present here to convey it to those who are not present here. And this includes all the human beings who were living at that time and all the human beings who are to come in this world till the doomsday. This is the duty of the Ummah to convey to them. If the Ummah fails to do the duty, it is to blame on the Day of Judgment. And the nations of the world will be able to sue us against, sue against us. Oh Allah, they were the custodians. They never conveyed the message to us. This is, فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Now we are Mursal. Don't misunderstand me. Because Rasul, what does it mean? Messenger. Muhammad was the messenger of Allah. And the Ummah is the messenger of the messenger of Allah. These words were used by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi himself. When you know Hazrat Muhammad ibn Jabal was being sent to Yemen as a governor, and the Prophet asked him, what will you do if a matter comes before you for decision? He said, I'll decide according to the Quran, Book of Allah. What if you don't find anything in the Quran? Then I will decide it by your Sunnah. Then, if, the, if you don't find anything in Sunnah also, then what will you do? Summa ishtahidu. Then I'll try my best to have a formal opinion. And the Prophet said, Alhamdulillah. And he gave him, you know, Shabash. Allazi waffaqa rasoola rasoolillah. Who has given, you know, this capacity to the messenger of the messenger of Allah. So actually he was an emissary of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad was an emissary of Allah. So he was the emissary of the emissary of Allah. So actually this is the whole ummah is Rasul in that sense. Not one individual, the whole ummah collectively is the Rasul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we must look to our responsibilities. فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ فَلَنَقُصَّنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ بِعِلْمٍ وَمَا كُنَّا غَائِبِينَ And then, we shall relate to you with our knowledge and we were not absent. What was happening when, when Nuh was preaching to the people? We were not absent. We were watching what is happening, what Nuh is doing. When Muhammad was preaching in the streets of Mecca, Allah was watching, seeing what my bondsman is doing and what he has to bear for my religion, for my deen. For my message, how what hardships he is undergoing, then we shall all relate. Well, was no and the weight will be decisive on that day. This uh, these wording can be translated in two ways. Hak only truth will have the weight. Falsehood will not carry any weight, and the other. Only the weight will be decisive. What does it mean? فَمَنْ سَقُلَتْ مَبَاذِينُهُ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So whosoever has, you know, his scales are heavy. The scales of the good deeds. If they are heavy, then they, they are the people who will be, who will be flourishing, who will be successful. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَبَاذِينُهُ And whose scales of good deeds are light. They don't come up to the minimum at least, minimum required. They are the people who have destroyed themselves, who have put them and their, themselves in loss. In what they were, you know, doing wrongly, treating wrongly our revelations, our ayat, behaving wrongly with it, reacting wrongly towards them. And oh mankind, we have established you on our earth. This, this is a settlement, divine settlement. We have settled you in our earth. 
وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَيْشِ And we have produced in this earth for you the livelihoods, different types of livelihoods. Someone is telling the land and he is earning through it. Somebody is doing some other work and he is burning through it. All sorts of ma'aish, ma'ishat, ma'aish, that's the plural. So we have put in this. Qalilam ma tashkurun, but it's very little that you are grateful. You are only grateful very seldom. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ سَوَّرْنَاكُمْ Today, now we have another ayah which supports the view of those who believe in evolution on the basis of Qur'an. This ayah, please look to the words. In the beginning we have the pronoun in plural. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ And we created you. And it is plural, not ka. Kum. Summa savvarna kum. Then we gave you a form. Features. Summa kulna lil malaika tis judu le adam. And then we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. Fasajadu. All of them prostrated. Illa Iblis. Except Iblis. Nam yakum mina sajadeen. He not, he didn't join the prostrators. Now what does it mean? It can be taken to denote that a species was created first. And out of a species an individual was selected. And when the roof that was created much before, the roof, the spirit of Adam was put in that individual of that species, he became Adam. فَإِذَا صَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Adam was not created as a single individual. This ayah can be taken to mean it. Because وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةَ سِجُدُوا لِعَادَمْ فَسَدُوا لِلَّهِ بِلِيسِ So this, you know, goes in support of the view of those people. Although, it can be interpreted in other ways also. That potentially in the creation of Adam, all the progeny of Adam was also included. That can also be meaning. So it can be interpreted in both ways. But apparently the verse, they grant support to those people who believe in evolution on the basis of the Quran. Allah said to him, asked Iblis, what prevented you? That you didn't prostrate before Adam. When I had commanded you to do that, He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire. And you created him from dust, from clay. Nar is a very subtle thing. You know this dust and clay. Very inner thing. Nar is very active. Nar is superior. Now he saw only the animal being of man, which has come out from the clay. He couldn't see the ruh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was breathed into him, into Adam. So he was seeing only the material aspect of Adam, not the spiritual aspect of Adam. So he said, well, this material aspect, in the material aspect, I am superior to him, and it is correct. But Adam was superior, why? Because of that soul. When I have breathed into him from my own soul, then you should fall down before him in prostration. Iblis couldn't see it. He saw only the material aspect. Allah said, now go down from here. It's not, it's not your right to be here, you know, and you know, insolent against Allah, arrogant against Allah. Now you get out from here and you are from among the disgraced creatures. And he requested, now grant me a respite till the day they are resurrected. This was the request. And it was granted by Allah. Qala, 
That respite is granted to you. You will live. The same jinn, Iblis, is living up till now. And he will be living till the day of resurrection. A very big exception. Very big exception. And he is the source of all evil on this earth. A book was written in this continent. I think it appeared in 1958. Pawns in the Game by William Guy Kerr. It was published in Toronto, I think, in Canada. And this book is, has described very fully well. There is one power, one center of all evil in this universe. And all these big leaders, and you know, they are like puppets being moved, you know, just like the puppets. All the revolutions that have taken place, and all these big changes that are coming, and all these, you know, big wars that have been fought. One source. And that is Iblis, no doubt. He is the enemy from the first day of Adam and his progeny. And he is the enemy till the last day of this world. And he has been given this chance and this respite. Okay, you try yourself. You try to take my bondsmen away from the right path. Let us see how many of them, they stick to the right path despite your temptations and everything. So that is the basis of the struggle between khair and shar, between the good and the evil. Very good couple from Allama Iqbal, because this contest, you know, it is now going to be very severe, very soon. It's going to be reach its zenith, very soon. Dunya ko hai phir maar kae ruho badan pesh, tehzeeb ne phir apne darindo ko bhara, Allah ko paamar diye momin pe bharosa, Iblis ko Europe ki machino ka sahara. This conflict is going to intensify. Armageddon, now it's not very far off. Al-Malhamatul Uzma, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about it. Anyhow, Kala inna ka minal munzareen, Kala fa bima aghwaitani, La aqudanna lahum siratak al-mustaqeen. He said, O oh Lord, now that you have sent me astray, you sent me astray, you degraded me, I will sit in ambush for them on thy straight path. I will attack them. Summa laati yannahum mi mene yadihim. I will attack them from their front, from in khalfahim, from their backs, wan aymanihim, from their right, wan shamailihim, from their left. وَلَا تَجَدُوا أَكْسَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ And you will not find most of them grateful to you. I will prove it, I will show it. قَالَ خُرُجْ مِنْهَا مَذُومًا مَدْهُورًا Allah said, get out from there, disgraced and expelled. لَمَنْ تَبَيَاكَ مِنْهُمْ Whosoever from them follows you, لَهَمْ لَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنْكُمْ مَجْمَعِينَ I will fill my Jahannam with all of you. With you will go all the progeny of Adam who follow you. Now this story of Iblis and Adam, it was given in the fourth section of Surah Al-Baqarah also. And I told you at that time, this is repeated seven times in the Quran. Just look to the importance that Quran attaches to this. Because this is the basis of this struggle and conflict between good and evil in the world. We have to understand it. This is the basis of this conflict. This is the basic philosophy of Quran. That is why it's repeated seven times. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Araf, then you will see it in Surah Al-Hijr, then Surah Al-Bani Israel, then Surah Al-Kahf, then again Surah Al-Taha, then again Surah Al-Fad, seven times in the Quran. Well, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden. And you eat from it, from wherever you like. But don't go near this. Now this was you know, pointed. Quran doesn't tell us what type of a tree it was. But you know this, and it, for testing, you know, any tree could be fixed. It was only to see whether he, he is, you know, 
He obeys Allah or shaitan can take him away. It was only to demonstrate to him that shaitan will try his best to lead you astray. So don't touch this. Rest of the garden is open to you. Eat from whichever plant, whichever tree you want to eat. But don't go near this, this. Don't do, both of you, don't go near this. If you do that, you will become from among the evil doers. For waswasa lahuma shaitanu. Now the Satan began to whisper into their ears and into their minds. The yubdiya lahuma ma'uriya anhuma min sawatihima. So as to make them see their private parts which were up till that time hidden from them. Now we can't know what exactly happened at that time. We have to take these words, you know, these are divine words. The details, what type of address they had, or they were not conscious of their sex organs, maybe. That consciousness, you know, came after this. But we can't say anything for sure. But the result was, وَقَالَ مَا نَحَكُمَا and the and Satan said to them, Madha Kumara Bokuma until Kanhade Shajara, your Lord has not prohibited you from going this to this tree and eating from it. Illa Antakuna Malakan. Only because except only because lest you become like angels. Autakuna min al Khalidin. Or you become immortals. If you eat from this tree, you will become either like angels or you will become immortals. Khalidin. Wa qasamahuma. And he swore to both of them, Inni lakuma la min nasihin I am the best sincere advisor to both of you. Now this is to be noted. The general tradition goes with us that the Satan, you know, he led astray Hazrat Hawa, Eve. And Hazrat Hawa persuaded Hazrat Adam. This is not given by Quran. You know, in every ayah, the word is for the two. Kasama Huma. He whispered into both of them. Kasama Huma. Vavaswasa Lahuma. Vavaswasa Lahuma Shaitan Ulayudya Lahuma. Mavuriya An Huma. Min Sawate Hima. Vakala Ma Naha Kuma. Rabbu Kuma. An Hadhi Shadrati. Illa An Takuna Manakani Al Takuna Min Al Khalibi. This is repeated so many times. Don't think that it was. Hawa, or it was only the feminine side, you know, which erred. Both of them erred. Rakasa Mahuma, Inni Lakuma, Amin and Nasin, I am your best sincere advisor. Fadallah Huma de Gurur. So Satan caused both of them to fall. This is the fall of Adam. They committed a mistake. Falamma Zaka Shajarata, when both of them tasted from the tree, Badat lahuma sawatuhuma. Their hidden parts, their parts of shame, their sexual organs, they became evident to them. Watafiqa yaksifani alayhimami warakil jannah. And they began to sew together the leaves of the garden to cover them. Manada huma rabbuhuma. Now their Lord called to them. Alam anha kuma antil kuma shajara. Had I not. Prohibited you from that tree? وَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانُ لَكُمَا عَدُوبُ مُبِينَ And didn't I tell you beforehand that Satan for you both is a clear enemy? قَالَا رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Now both of them repented. Both of them said, O our Lord, we have done wrong to our own selves. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't show mercy on us, of sure we will become among those who are going in loss. We will be doomed. We will be destroyed. Now this is actually a very important point in the theology of Islam and the basic distinction between theology of Christianity. Christianity doesn't believe that this sin was pardoned to Adam and Eve. 
It is based on the idea that every human child who is born in the progeny of Adam is born with sin, the original sin. While Islam tells us a mistake was committed by Adam and Eve, no doubt, but they repented, they apologized, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. Now it was not to be transmitted to the whole of the progeny, because the parents, you know, they committed a mistake or committed sin. So every whosoever, every newborn is basically human nature. He comes in this world with sin. No. On the contrary, the Hadith says, every child who comes in this world, he is a Muslim. Fitra. He is, he is born on fitra. Nature. Pure nature. He comes here with pure nature. Kullu maludin yuladu ala al-fitra. Fa abawahu yuhavvedanihi. Aw yumajjisanihi. Aw yunasiranihi. Every human child who is born in this world is born with pure nature of Islam. Now it are the parents who turn him into a Jew, who turn him into a Christian, or they make a, you know, a Majusi from, you know, out of him, but he is born as a Muslim or al-Fitrah. Because you find in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ There the kalimat are not, not mentioned. Here the kalimat have been mentioned. But the second part is omitted here. Why? Because it is, it is given there. فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned to them with all his mercy and all his forgiveness. Now he said, go down from this garden, settle down in the earth, and you will be enemies to each other. This is the conflict of good and bad. On the one side, Iblis and his agents, from the jinns as well as the human beings. Agents, working as agents of Iblis. On the other side, the prophets, the messengers, the books, the awliya Allah, the da'een who call towards Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْصَلُ قَوْلُمْ مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ This conflict has been going. سَتِيزَ كَارْ رَحَا هَيْ أَزَلْ سِتَائِمْ رُوز چِرَاغِ مُسْتَفَوِي سَيْ شَرَارِ مُ this conflict has been going on throughout the history. Badukum le badinadu. Now you are enemies to each other. Walakum filar de mustakarum wa mataun ilahin. And in the earth you have now a dwelling and livelihood for a fixed period of time, not forever. An hour has been fixed already, and that's the doomsday. Kala fiha tahiyaun wa fiha tamutun wa binha tukhrajun. And he said. Now you will stay there, live there, then you will die into it. When you will die, you will be buried into it. Even if you are not buried, you will be burnt. For example, now where does go the ashes? You might put them in the, in the sea or in the ocean, but then again it has to settle to the earth. It goes, it goes there anyhow. If the birds have eaten your body, then the birds will die and they will become a part and parcel of the clay. So actually you will be returned to it. قَالَ فِيهَا تَحْيَوْنَ وَفِيهَا تَبُوتُونَ وَمِنْهَا تُخْرَجُونَ And then from this you will be taken out again. يَا بَنِي آدَمَ قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُعَارِي سَوَاتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا Now because you know by eating the fruit of that forbidden tree, the pair, our forefathers and our grandmother and grandfather, they became naked. So here you know with that connection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing towards an innovation, a very shame, shameful deed that some of the Arabs had invented in the name of piety, you know. And what was that? They used to make tawaf, circumambulate around Kaaba, absolutely naked, stark naked. But this is how Allah had made us. We put off all these things, you know. And when we are circumambulating around the house of Allah, we should be as Allah sent to us in this world. Not to have these additional things on our bodies. 
and this they thought it was a very big act of virtue and it was a very bad, very shameful act that they had invented. Now this is what is discussed here. Ya Badi Adama, O children of Adam, Adam Zalal Ekub Libasa, we have sent down upon you dress, raiment of different kinds. You are so articum, so that you can cover your private parts of your body. Varisha, and also an adornment for you. When you wear good dress, you are adorned. Walibasu taqwa, zalika khair. Over and above this libas of raiment and clothes, you must have another libas, and that is of taqwa. That is much better, much more precious. Zalika min ayatillahi la'allakum yastakkaroon. These are from among the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that they might be reminded. Ya bani adama la yaftinannakum ash-shaitanu kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannah yanzi'u anhuma libasahuma liyuriyahuma sawatihima. O children of Adam, this Satan, let not Satan tempt you or seduce you. As he turned out, he made, you know, your fathers, your, your grandfather and mother, he had made them to be turned out of Jannah. He made them strip and become naked from their, their dress. The Yuri Yahuma Sawatehima, so that he showed to them their private parts, their, their organs of shame. Innahu Yarakum Hoa He and his tribe, his agents, his armies, they see you, mean Hesoda Taronahu, where from you can't see them. Jins are invisible to humans. They can see us, we can't see them. Malaika see us, we can't see them. Because both of them are from Noor and Nar. The root of these both words is the same. Noor, Nar. Alif and Vaw, they are Huruful Illah. And Huruful Illah, they, they are exchanged in one other's place. Nar, Noor. So they were created from Noor. Both are very subtle things. And angels were created from Noor and the the jinns were created from Nar. So they are invisible. They can take the form. What is more subtle can take another form. But the inert body that we have, we can't change our form. They can take the form of man. Hazrat Jibreel wasalam, used to come to Muhammad wasalam, many a times in the form of a man. And mostly in the shape and in the features of Dahya Kalbi Razi Allah Ta'ala. He was a very beautiful, handsome person. So that was the shape taken by Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam whenever he came to, mostly whenever he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi in the form of a human being. A jinn can have, can attire himself as a human being, but we can't do it. So they are potentially invisible for us and they see us. Innahu yarakum, verily he sees you. Not only you, wa huwa qabiluhu. His agents of the jinns and his, you know, his tribe, min haysu la taronahum, from where you can't see them. Inna jalna shayatin awliyal illazina la yuminun, and we have made these satans. Now these are satans, not one shaitan. That was one shaitan. Now agents included. These are the satans. We have made these satans friends of those who don't believe. If you believe in Allah, they will run away. If you don't have that iman and faith in Allah, they will come and overpower you. وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَعِشَةً قَالُوا وَجَنَّا عَلَيْهَا آبَانَ And when they are doing and committing a very shameful act, I have told you, making tawaf around Kaaba in an absolutely stark, naked form, they say, قَالُوا وَجَنَّا عَلَيْهَا آبَانَ We found our forefathers doing this. وَاللَّهُ أَمَرَنَا بِهَا And this was their argument. If our forefathers were doing it, they must have been ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could they have done it by themselves? Allah wa amara na biha. For in Allah la ya amara bil fasha. Tell them, oh no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never command shameful acts. This is shame. Al haya wa bin al iman. Al haya wa shrobatu bin al iman. Haya, you know, shyness, shame. They are 
from among the highest faculties of human beings. Highest faculties. This faculty is present even in some of the more evolved higher animals. The elephants never mate in the presence of other elephants. They go to privacy. privacy. When a she-elephant, you know, she gives birth to a child, all the males get away very far off. And they surround that, you know, wood and jungle, so that nobody can now enter. And only the females attend that, that, that female, uh, you know, elephant, when she is delivering a child. So all these things are from basic nature. And in man, this, you know, shame and shyness has reached its climax. And we read it in Physiology of the Brain, that the highest functions of brain are shyness and fear. These are the highest functions. Why? Fear to preserve yourself so that you can run away from whatever can, can take your life. So this is the highest function, preservation of the self and shyness. They are the two highest functions of the brain. That is why when you take liquor, these two highest factors, they are knocked down. When they are knocked out, you become more brave. You become more shameless. Now you can speak, make a better speech. Because now, you know, you have become shameless. Behaya basho harche khaikun. When you have become behaya, you know, you can do anything now. So actually, the resultant effect of this liquor and alcohol is that apparently you become more active, more strong, more mobile. But actually, what has happened? The highest function of your brain has been knocked out. The shyness and that fear has gone out. So apparently, you have become fearless. Shy, you are not shy anymore. So this is actually shyness, Sobatuman al Iman. Ul Amara Rabbi Bil Kist. Ulin Lalahala Yamur Bil Fasha, Takuruna Allah Mala Talamun. Are you saying and attributing to Allah which you don't which you never know? You don't have any proof, any document. Ul Amara Rabbi Bil Kist. Tell them, my Lord has commanded justice. And straighten your faces on every time of prayer. And call him, pray him, pray to him. But Mukhlisina Lahuddin is very important to understand. Keeping your deen exclusive for him regarding both worship and obedience. If you are praying to him, but you are committing shirk also, he will not listen to you. Go away. Unless you have that ikhlas, tawheed. You are exclusively his bondsman. You are obeying him exclusively. You love him most as, as compared to any other being. If this is not the condition, your deen is not khalis. It's not pure. Mukhlisin alahuddin. If you have made your deen exclusively for him, both regarding obedience and love and worship, then he will respond to your prayers. Wa yahsabun annahum muhtadun. Mukhlisin alahuddin kama badakum taudun. As you were created in the beginning, you will return. Again, you will be created. As you originated, in the same way you will return. Fiha tahyona wa fiha tabutuna wa minha tukhrajun. These words came in ayah number 25. And in the same way, kama badakum ta'udu. Fariqan hada. But during this period, a party Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided to the right path. Wa fariqan haqqa alayhimu zalala. And there is another party whom this, this misguidance, you know, has occurred. They have taken hold of another party. All this error and injustice. They have taken this shayateen, the Satan and his agents as friends and protectors. Leaving Allah, besides Allah. And still they think that they are rightly guided. Ya Bani Adam, khuzu zina takum in the kulle masjid. O sons of Adam, take your adornment at the time of every prayer or at the place of every prayer. Masjid is ismu zarf. 
اینڈ اٹ کین بی زرف مکان اینڈ زرف زمان مسجد پریئر ٹائم پریئر پلیس وین ایور یو آر گوئنگ ٹو اے ماسک یو پٹ آن یور ڈریس اینڈ اٹ شوڈ بی دی بیٹر ڈریس یو آر گوئنگ ٹو دی کورٹ آف اللہ یو آر پریزنٹنگ یور سیلف ٹو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ناٹ این شیبی ڈریس اف یو گو ٹو سم فنکشن اف یو گو ٹو اے ڈنر ہاؤ مچ یو نو ٹیک کیئر آف آف یور ڈریس بٹ یو آر گوئنگ ٹو ماسک اینڈ یو آر ناٹ ایٹ آل یعنی کیئر فل اباؤٹ یور ڈریس خدو زینا تک ہوم ان دا کل مسجد یو مسٹ ہیو دی ڈریس بیسٹ یو ول بی یو شوڈ بی ڈریس ان دی پراپر وے ایٹ ایوری ٹائم آف پریئر ایٹ ایوری پلیس آف پریئر بشربو کلو بشربو اینڈ ایٹ اینڈ ڈرنک بلا تو سرفو بٹ ڈونٹ ایکسیڈ دی لیمٹس ڈونٹ بی ایکسٹرا وگنٹ ڈونٹ ایٹ اینی تھنگ آرام ڈونٹ ڈرنک اینی تھنگ آرام اینڈ دین آلسو ناٹ اوور ایٹ اینڈ اوور ڈرنک اس راف بوتھ ویز ان نہ لاحب المسرفین ویری لی اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ڈزن لائک دی ایکسٹرا وگنٹس کل من ہر رم عزینت اللہ اللہ اخراج علیہ باد ہی ناؤ دس ہیز آلسو بین انادر ایکسٹریم تھرو آؤٹ دی ہسٹری آف ریلیجن سم پیپل دے بیکم پائس ناؤ دے تھنگ وی شوڈ نوٹ ٹیک اینی تھنگ وچ از ویری گڈ اینڈ ویری ٹیسٹی میلس وی شوڈ نوٹ ٹیک وائی ٹو ٹیک دیز فروٹ اینڈ دیز تھنگس وی شوڈ ٹیک اونلی ویری کورس میلس اینڈ دس ٹو دیم بیکمز اے ویری پری کنڈیشن فار پائرٹی اینڈ فار گاڈلینس اینڈ دے ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو ٹیک اپون دیم وی آر گڈ ڈریس کل من ہر رب زینت اللہ اللہ اخراج علیہ باد ہی وہ طیبات میں رسک آس دیم ہو ہیز میڈ ڈکلیئرڈ ان لیگل اور ان پرمیسیبل زینت آف اللہ اللہ ہیز گیون یو دس اڈاؤنمنٹ ہی ہیز پروڈیوس آل دیز تھنگس اونلی یو شوڈ ارن تھرو حلال بٹ وٹ ایور یو ارن تھرو حلال یو کین ہیو بیسٹ تھنگس ٹو ایٹ اف یو کین افورڈ اٹ ڈو این ایٹ ایٹ دیم اف یو کین افورڈ ہیو گڈ ڈریس کل من ہر رب ازی اٹ از ناٹ اگینسٹ تقوا It is not against piety. Ul man haram azinat Allah illati. The monasticism, you know, the rahbaniya, that is not in Islam. Ul man haram azinat Allah illati akhraj alayhi baadi. Who had forbidden these things, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has made for, them, for men. Lay baadi wa tayyibat min al-risq. And the good things of eating. Ul hiya lil lazeen amanu fil hayat al-dunya khalisat ayyom al-qiyamah. Tell them. These things Allah has created for His believing people in this world also, but exclusively in the hereafter. Exclusively for the moments in the hereafter. In this world, He gives something to others also. But the moments also can partake from it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these things for His believing bondsmen, believing people, not for the kuffar. It's only, you know, for the sake of this trial and testing that he's giving to Kuffar also. But Allah has created them for people who believe in him. So don't deprive yourself only under wrong notions of piety and taqwa and zuhud. In this way, we detail our revelations for those people who have knowledge. اور ہو وانٹ ٹو ہیو نالج کو لن لما حرم ربی الفواہ شما زہر ابن ہا و ما بطن تل دم مائی لارڈ ہیز میڈ ڈکلیئرڈ ان لا فل وٹ ایور از شیم فل وٹ ایور از ان ڈیسنٹ ویدر اٹ از ہڈن اور اپرنٹ اینڈ ایویڈنٹ ول اسما اینڈ سن ول بغیا اینڈ ٹریس پاسز اینڈ آپریشن Baghiya, well, Baghiya goes, if it is against Allah, it is trespassing his limits. If it is against people, it is oppressing the others. Well, Baghiya begair al-haq, without any reason. Wa'an tushriku billahi ma'alam yunazil bihi sultana, and that you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for whom or for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent down any authority. Wa'an taqulu ala Allahi ma'ala ta'alamun, and that you attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for which you have no knowledge, no authority. These are the things prohibited by Allah. Not eating something good or not wearing something good. These things have not been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ عَجَلْ And for every community and every nation there is a time fixed. إِذَا جَاجَلُهُمْ When that time, fixed time comes for them, لَا يَسْتَاخِرُونَ سَعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ Neither they will be able to delay it even for one hour. Nor they will be able to advance it. To whom 
to whosoever nation Allah sent a messenger, if time was fixed, till that time they are free, whether they accept or not accept, whether they believe or not believe. Till this, that fixed hour comes, neither the punishment can come before that. Even if the Prophet wants that they should be punished now, enough is enough. They have denied me, they have refuted me. No, it's not on your authority. We have read last night. Had it been in my power, then you know the settle, the, the matter between you and me would have been settled long ago. So that is the, the I, I need to hear again. Neither it can be delayed for an hour, nor it can be brought earlier. Ya bani adama imma yaqiyannakum rusulum minkum. Now these ayat are just like the concluding ayat of the fourth section of Surah Al-Baqarah. فَإِمَّا يَاتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَا هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْزَنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ إِمَّا يَاتِيَنَّكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ O children of Adam, whenever messengers will come to you from me, تَقُسُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ Relating to you and narrating to you and reciting unto you my revelations. فَمَنِ اتَّقَى So whosoever will fear Allah, will have taqwa of Allah, will have proper regard for Allah, will have the consciousness of Allah, وَأَسْلَحَ And mend his ways and rectifies his his behavior. فَلَا خَفُنْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْزَنُونَ So there will be no fear upon them, nor they will grieve. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who will deny our revelations, who will belie them, وَاسْتَقْبَرُوا عَنْهَا And turn away their faces from that due to arrogance and haughtiness. أُولَائِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ They will be the people of fire, هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And they will remain it forever, forever. فَمَنْ أَزْلَمُ مِمَّنْ إِفْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَوْ كَذَّبَ بِآيَاتِهِ So this subject has been repeated many times. Who is more evil doer than the one who concocts something and uh, some uh, some false thing and then attributes it to Allah. How kazaba bi And in the same way, who can be more evil doer than that that person who belies his revelations? Ulaika yanaluhum nasibuhum min al kitab. They will have their portion which has been ordained for them in this world till they remain. They will be eating, they will be drinking, they will have money, they will have all the comforts. This is which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for them in their taqdeer. It is the destiny. They will partake from it. Ulaika yanaluhum nasibuhum min al-kitab. Hatta idha jaathum rusuluna. So when then our messenger will come to them, our messengers, and here it means the angels of death. Yatawafawnahum. And they will take possession of their souls. قَالُوا اَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ They will say, where are those whom you were praying and calling besides Allah? Where are your associate gods? قَالُوا ضَلُّوا عَنَّا They will say, they have vanished away from us. They have gone with the wind. They have just vanished. وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ And they will testify against their own selves. أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ That they were the unbelievers. اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ O our Lord, don't include us in those people. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم. الله أكبر الله أكبر. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA. is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. 
The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.